January 26, 4811 Planet Anglor A glade outside Hawthorne proper, in the country of Moreal. A dried crumpled leaf blew across the toe of his shiny black boot as he lifted his right foot. Nate should have stayed home. Honor be damned. The situation was all a misunderstanding, an accident. Now he would pay dearly for it. He was going to die. Six. Nate swallowed hard and drew a deep breath as he took his sixth step. The crisp morning breeze ruffled his hair, blowing an overlong lock of dark brown into his eyes. He blinked and shook his head to dislodge it, then wished he hadn't. His head still ached from the heavy imbibing he'd indulged in the night before. If by some miracle he got out of this alive, he'd never drink again. Seven. Lord White's voice sounded exceedingly harsh over the rustle of leaves and a neighing horse. Then again, maybe the circumstances made it sound that way, with the serenity of the glade as a contrast. With his mind dazed and his body on autopilot, Nate continued forward, peering over the horizon, past the bare trees to where the sun began to light the sky with its morning blush. When was the last time he'd been up early enough to see the sunrise? He couldn't remember, but knowing this might be the last time, his carefree existence as the oldest son of the Duke of Hawthorne suddenly seemed worthless. Someone at the edge of the clearing coughed as Lord White's voice rang out. Eight! Nate advanced a pace. Why had he ever thought he could reason with the Viscount? Daniel Bradford, Viscount Hargrove, and heir of the Marquis of Oxley, had always been a hothead. Despite the fact their fathers were the dearest of friends and Nate had known Hargrove practically since birth, there had never been any love lost between them. As children they'd been rivals, but as adults they merely ignored each other. Until last night. Last night they'd become bitter enemies. Nine. Closing his eyes, Nate planted one foot in front of the other. The ancient Terran gun felt heavy in his hand. He didn't want to do this. The accusation that had brought him here was false, but his alibi was just as damning. Everything in him screamed to run from the field and flee. He'd be called a coward, but at least he'd live another twenty years. Ten! Fire! Nate turned, knowing exactly what he had to do. He could not kill Hargrove. If by some miracle Nate lived, his father would surely disown him. He might be a wastrel, but he adored his father and disappointing him was the worst fate Nate could suffer, more horrible than even death. He aimed over Hargrove's left shoulder. The sound of gunfire erupted, and a searing pain blossomed in his side. Flinching from the agony, his finger jerked the trigger. Hargrove's blue eyes widened, his mouth dropped open, and he stared at his chest where a red stain spread across the tan brocade waistcoat. He looked back at Nate, his face pasty white, and crumpled to the ground like a rag doll. A loud feminine scream tore through the air. Miss Victoria Evans, Hargrove's fiancée, ran onto the field and flung herself over the Viscount. Oh, galaxy, what have I done? Nate stood perfectly still, watching for any movement from his opponent. Someone rushed toward Nate. Stardust, Nate! Jared. Nate was vaguely aware of the hustle and bustle around him as he let the gun slip from his numb hand. It hit the dead grass with a soft thud. Staring at Hargrove's lifeless body, partially covered by Victoria's blue riding habit, he willed the man to get up, but that wasn't to be. A flock of people crowded around the Viscount, partially blocking the view, but the sobbing and sounds of disorder continued. Fingers prodded his side, making the dull twinge flare into sharp pain. He hissed out a breath and glanced down at Jared's dark head. Why was his younger brother here? Perched on his knees, Jared examined Nate's side. It's only a flesh wound. He rose and moved in front of Nate. We have to get out of here. He clasped Nate's shoulders and shook him. Nate, are you listening to me? Nate tore his gaze away from Jared's worried brown eyes and looked past his shoulder. Hargrove couldn't be dead. He couldn't. Nate hadn't meant to kill the Viscount. He was the one who was supposed to die. The physician stood over Hargrove, shaking his head as Victoria sobbed harder, raking her hand through Hargrove's blonde hair, begging him to respond. Even Lord White had waddled his portly body over to stand by the downed man. Nate! Jared shook him harder. 